Games of War 4th Edition brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to beastsofwar.com to get the latest in news, tactics and tutorials. Take control of armies from the five kingdoms of Arakania and vie for the throne of the ancient king in Wrath of Kings. Master your skills on the battlefield over on beastsofwar.com. Hello everybody, I am back with Konstantinos and Stavros from Parabellum and we are talking more conquest. So today it is the, now correct me if I pronounce this wrong, Dwegum? Dwegum, yeah. And the Nords. Correct. Okay, so I, one of these two is going to probably be my favourite faction. I will let everybody out there guess. Okay, you guessed right. <laughs> Let's kick into it. So which of the two would you like to talk about first? I think we can kick off with the Dwagon. Yeah. Dwagon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll do those, you you, 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 you fanboy, you. Oh, <laughs> I, I like them. I like them. Oh, I, 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 I need I like Ben them. in this seat, like, right now, but he's on a plane back to England. <laughs> <laughs> I like them. Now, uh, as a disclaimer, I'd like to say that all history and all we kind of know as humans about the Dwagon is what is being passed down by their Nemancers. Now, Nemancers is this specific sort of social class inside their structure or a bit aside from their normal social structure mm -hmm. they are the keepers of uh the memories because mm -hmm. the way yeah you can actually oh do we have one? Oh, that wow. is a dwagom now okay. i know what you're thinking i'm i'm thinking <laughs> hewn from the rock born of the mountains uh no, not really, but I know why you think that. Yeah. I will, you will quickly find out what happened to the guys that you're thinking of. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, is he a Nemancer, did you say they were called? Uh, no, he's a, a, a typical warrior uh, Dwagon. Okay. A ah, higher standing, not ah, a typical yeah, warrior. Yeah, true, true, true. But he's not, he's not one of the exceptionals. That's what, okay. what you, yeah. He's not a run of the mill. He's not a standard reduced, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you were on about Nemancers. These are the, the lore keepers of this race. Uh, yeah? It goes deeper than that, because the way the Dwegon were created, and they were created, mm. they were given from uh, the get-go, they were given incredible, almost flawless memories. Mm. So that is a characteristic that they have to this day. Now, some of them built on that. They dwelt deeper into that, uh, let's say, talent or ability or gift and they m transformed it into sort of an art. Oh, okay. And in many cases, we could consider it art, actually, as apart from uh, their own writing system, which is, again, uses this ability, mm. a lot of the ornamentation that they have at their holes on their, uh, on their armor and everything mm -hmm. is linked to um, nemency. Mm. It is a presentation of memories mm -hmm. that are if not, well, not common, but are, that are being passed down to all the weapon. Yeah. Now, as I said, I mentioned that they were created, and they were created by the dragons that Ooh. we mentioned in uh, one of our previous discussions, I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, the dragons, after their little bout with, uh, with the spires, they learned stuff from the spires, and biomancy, or a form of biomancy, was one of those things they learned. Mm. Now, of course... As dragons, they interpret it through their own eyes and will. And mm. their first creation was uh, the forefathers of the Dwagom, who mm. was, uh, it was created to be a servitor race. That mm. was it. They would create beautiful things. They would mine, they would create beautiful things. They would find the best of jewels and mm. craft them. And the rooks of the dragon soon became these immensely rich and very beautiful well, not buildings, but let's say creations. Mm. Can I interrupt a of little course, bit here? Of course. Um, one of the things that sparked the dragon war with the spires was that the dragons were, uh, even these degenerated forms that we see today, mm. they were always apex predators. Yes. As apex predators, they had need of nothing. Mm -hmm. So the first time they encounter a full-blown civilization with stuff, with things, with jewels, with... Mm with cups, with, with stuff, <laughs> they're fascinated by it, particularly yes. the younger generations. And it was in large part from the side of the dragons, this, the first time that they come across things, mm. um, tools, 
Like, why do you need a tool when you can shatter a mountain? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? And uh, if you can't shatter the mountain uh, raw force, you can do it magically. Yeah. Um, so the younger generations, um, because each generation of dragon is a little bit weaker than the one before, yes. look at all these things and say, I want it. Mm. They have it. I want it. Oh, okay. War. Um, <laughs> uh, so that is the, the, the simplest way I have ever seen the entirety of human conflict boiled down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, good point. Shady, um, mine, no mine. Fight. <laughs> yes. Um, so obviously, when they create a servitor race, mm. what they want them for is to make these pretty things yes. for them. Ah, I see. So basically, they they've basically had their eyes open to to greed and lust for things which are of no incredible importance to them, no incredible use, except for that they're pretty and shiny and they want them. And also they give them a way to bypass, yeah. as I said, each generation is weaker than the one ah, before. Yes. So if I have servants, if I have tools, I'm suddenly a match for the elders. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, now, so. this race they created, while pure servitors, they did not like it. Mm. They, they had a number of rebellions trying to break free of the dragon's hold. However, they in their creation, again, they were imprinted with loyalty so mm -hmm. the moment an actual dragon showed up mm -hmm. they would bend the knee willing or not oh and of course this would only go for so long the leaders of these rebellions or the most vicious ones were sent to the deepest mines to carve and find the, the rarest gems and mm -hmm. of course the deepest mines are also the most dangerous yes now uh, a group of those dwelled really deep well, so deep that in many ways, because of their anger, because of their passion, because of their willingness to bring actual conflict into, into play, they dug to where one of the horsemen was trapped from oh. back then. And the horseman they found through this pilgrimage of rage and mining mm. was war. Okay. And war can only happen among equals. Yes. So the moment the those uh, those creatures, let's call them, <laughs> just say one. the word. Nobody's I don't like be... the word because they're <laughs> they're gonna be wiped out anyway. <laughs> Basically, these 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 small angry Gre creatures, stout creatures, <laughs> stout craftsmen, <laughs> miners <laughs> with beards. Yes. Okay. So they, that, they... the dwar the, the dwarves. Okay. <laughs> there you go. The reason they didn't like, the, and I don't want to use that term, is because I like the dwagom, and the dwagom is what the dwa the dragons called them. Yes. For obvious reasons. Yes. They didn't like that. <laughs> As you can, and I don't like it either. Well, it, 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 <laughs> the dwagom is kind of a. A melding of the of dragon and the two words. Sort of. Ish. It is. It Ish. is a. It is a play. But it. Anyway, those and this is where the Dwagom are actually born. Okay. The moment they find war contained and trapped, mm. they see. Depending on whom from the numbers, they see two things. Mm. War, who is, an immense source of power. Mm. And they, some of them fall on, hit, on the horseman itself, on that primal thing. They fall on it and subsume it with a, with a mania to break free of the chains mm. that the dragons have put on, their, on the conditioning they had. Mm. And other, a bit more distanced, mm. they see that the prison itself must have immense power in order to keep mm. war contained. So those two groups each dig into a, a primal force that they don't really understand. Mm. So by shattering war and, well, yeah, when you shatter something that is chained, you essentially let it free somehow. Mm. They also took them inside them. War was now part of them. And by how about siphoning, I think it's the best word. Subsuming? Well, Merging that is for with? war. I would use that for war, but siphoning all that elemental power mm -hmm. that they found there. Mm. A primal elemental power of pure earth and pure fire mm. reforged their own, their, their actual bodies, their physique. Mm. So that is why I was so reluctant in using the term. The, the, the creatures that emerged from them, that they would call themselves Duagom, 
they were very different from the mm. dwarves that were outside. Yes. The servitor race that gave birth to them. Yes. So after a lot of, well, mysteries that happened down there, mm. subsuming war being one of them, mm. and siphoning the elemental powers being another, they're, when they emerge, they emerge as completely different beings. Mm. And they were primed with two, or with three, in a way, new forces, fire, mm -hmm. that made them passionate, that actually manifested in some of them. They were, as they call them, gifted in mm. fire. Earth, again, which gives them for a very good constitution and mm. the ability to go long periods without food or without sleep and need less sleep. And war. War is now part of them. Mm. And as I said before, war happens among equals. And for the first time, they can wage war on the dragons. Mm. And because of the primal energy, this is, which is still raw and fresh inside them, this war literally breaks the world. There are mountains and rooks that crumble under the conflict that ensues between dragons mm. and the Dwagom. And in their passion, they destroy the dragons to, let's say, near extinction. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's say near extinction. Okay. But they definitely shatter their civilization yes. and their strength yes, yes. hold on power. And that, that previous servitor is... Well, what happens to them whenever they encounter these these new uh, dwagon? Uh, well, the dwagon are not. They're not nice. They're not. <laughs> nice. Okay. I like them, but I wouldn't be diplomatic with them. Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't try to. No, they 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 believe that serves a race to be an insult and an affront. Mm. They eradicate them. Oh, I see. So from this this group then. A new race rises. To, a completely join, new race. To join the realms of this world. Yes. What is interesting is that even though it rises and it's a really powerful race in its... Still in its cradle. It's, it's right after its cradle. Well, its cradle was war, but still. Yes. <laughs> they look upon the world that they created, essentially, with their conflict. The dragons are eradicated. Their forefathers are eradicated. Mm. And... Well, the only thing this race knows is war. Mm. Now, uh, uh, the so-called Adamant King, uh, a key figure among them, tries to, con to contain that rage that is still inside them. Mm. And seeing as he cannot, he leaves. He abandons them to their fate. And leaderless, the Duegon try to build a society. Yes. But... And they all remember memory. They have great memory. They all remember the, the same thing. That does not mean they agree. Remembering the same thing from a different point of view yeah, does true. not bring a agreement. And so they argue. And the only way they know how to argue is to wage war. So they I disagree. Axon <laughs> theory. <laughs> exactly. And essentially, after eradicating the dragons, their forefathers, they almost eradicate themselves as well oh. after that. So the, the rage and the, the anger and the, the, the need for war, that power of war, it's, turns in on itself? Mm, yes, it? of course. It's, it's wherever there is something to wage war upon, mm. they try it. Especially back then when it's all very fresh, war is still raging inside mm. them. They have just subsumed his essence. Eventually, they are... They realize that they're only weakening themselves. Mm -hmm. They are forced to withdraw based on some very broad agreements mm -hmm. into holes, holes that they create in the ground mm -hmm. away from everything. They isolate themselves. Some of them realizing that the only way we can not kill each other is if we don't see each other. Mm -hmm. So they each retreat to these holes that will eventually evolve. Now, in these holes that some of them still exist today, Disagreement still goes on. Mm. The and we can start talking about today. Even though a lot of things happened, they exited their uh, their holds again during the fall. Mm -hmm. Because in the meantime, they also fought the spires. They were there. Why not fight them? This is what we do. Mm -hmm. This is why I like them. See, they're <laughs> well, look at that big shiny there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, let's have a go at that. Eventually, uh, all the losses they suffered throughout the ages force them to go underground. Mm. 
and to form a completely different society than anything else. It is a society based on exactly, well, war. Mm. Uh, just to give you an example, they don't have hours or anything. They have watches. That's it. They count time in watches. That is the only thing that happens all the time that mm. they can count on. Well, it's a, it's a meaningful measure of time for them. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, they have watches, commands, reigns of local fades. That's how they decide time. Mm. And their society is built on their prowess. They have the concept of agm, uh, is what they call agm, is the worth or weight mm -hmm. of the individual, because the individual comes second. Mm. The whole comes first. Mm. Now, you, in order to improve yourself, and of course, you, the only reason you're allowed to do this is because it strengthens the hold. In, in order to do that, you have to prove your worth constantly. Now, because we're talking about the Guagom, that is mainly happen that mainly happens through war or deeds of war. Mm. So they have a lot of challenges all the time, be it individuals mm -hmm. among them, which can range from I can run to that hole faster than you, to I can you know mm. make your face into a pulp very soon. <laughs> it feels like a very high intensity sort of society this time. It feels like everything is based on. If I am top of the pile, or if I'm not top of the pile, I'm always pushing to be top of the pile. That is true. However, it is a very imbalanced society in itself, because mm. the more worth you have, mm. the more men you're given. Mm. That is how military command is formed. Mm -hmm. If you are worth enough, you can have your own squad. Mm -hmm. Good. But if you have your squad, you gain worth through that squad, too. Mm -hmm. So it becomes sort of elitistic, mm -hmm. too, in the long run. However, none of this is passed down through generations. An individual is worth what an individual is worth. Mm -hmm. Children have no meaning. They don't inherit anything. Really? No. In fact, when uh, Duagom that actually has the right to have his own house and his own family dies, uh -huh. they seal everything that he had and go deeper and deeper. It's one of the reasons why the humans in the surface believe that most of these holes are not um, are empty because what they see is only the first layers of centuries of uh, building deeper and welding mm. deeper and deeper because those are abandoned. Now that's an interesting concept that whenever the the Dwagam passes away, his home is sealed. What about his wife and children? Are they allowed to continue the lives there until they pass away, or do they Not just need to move home. on further? Not in that home. Not in that no, home. No, no, no. That Ooh. was that what Dwagam's worth. Ah, he. He was worth that. He gained that through his deeds. The rest did nothing. Why should they? Well, not necessarily did nothing. Well, no, but yeah. did nothing for that. They may have for done that. other things. Yeah. And, and so their worth would determine where they go to live thereafter. Exactly. Ah. With their clan, with their family, and what they're apportioned aside from yeah. uh, their, whoever their partner was or that, whatever that's their family incredibly was. Incredibly intriguing. Now, within that society, that is the basic... Uh, Dwegom clan. Mm -hmm. That is how it works. They have sort of spiritual leaders, uh, individuals among them that have grouped together according to the original schism that happened in what we call the memory wars, the original mm -hmm. wars that where the Dwegom turn against each other. Yes. Now, on the one hand here, you have the ardent. They are stout believers, not in a religious sense. They do not worship war but they accept it as a gift. Okay. They embrace it as the tool that gave them their freedom. Okay. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm hearing stout believers. I'm just thinking tankers. <laughs> <laughs> that would reduce effectiveness in battle, though. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so here we can go to some True. images to try to give you some ideas. True Hello. of what we've got. True. I'm seeing what you're on about the, the fire gifted in the bottom right here. That, yes, that is one of the Arden, that is one of the people that, of uh, the Duegom, that um, embrace the gift of the prison and war. Mm. They, they are, however, in their own way, they are sort of cursed, because eventually those elements that prevail in them will consume them. Mm -hmm. uh, what other... They're fine with that, by the way. They've yeah. accepted that. I can imagine. Okay, so what other sort of aspects of the society are we seeing within this image? Uh, well, uh, 
the counterbalance to the Arden are the tempered. Mm -hmm. They are those who saw the prison and in that they saw salvation. Mm -hmm. And they are those that see that are those first who are gone might have not thought that through. Mm. <laughs> we might need to, you know, contain that original tainted gift and find a way to conquer our own selves and yeah. the taint of war that is everywhere in our society. It's one of the curious things that we mentioned is that the dragons, uh, if you remember from the previous talks that we had, were beings of balance. Yes. Not born of it, but they were beings of balance. So their yes. creations, their original creations, um, they were very balanced creatures. Mm. Earth, air, fire, water, an equal measure. Yes. An equal yes. measure. Yes. Um, the Duerom undid that. This infusion of, ele of elemental fire and elemental earth mm. warped their creation, and it is out of whack. Mm. So when a Duerom has too much of a gift, it can overcome him. Mm -hmm. And uh, these, uh, these gifted are treated in very different ways according to which sect, let's say, they believe in because once you once you're gifted in this way normally you're grant you're given to the tempered mm. who can test you and find ways to help you uh mm. generally um because i didn't want to explain mm, yeah. a little bit more it's there's ways that they can help but the ardent on the other hand say no you are perfect as you are mm. and you're meant to worship <laughs> as you are mm. so that leads to the stone sentinels and um which aren't here, we, they'll be revealed later. <laughs> um, and uh, um, what was the final name for them? I don't know, it's your call, man. <laughs> oh, so I have to use a placeholder name. Um, and <clears throat> these generically named uh, Flame Berserkers. <laughs> he's consumed by the old element he's gifted, most gifted in, mm. which is, well, obviously fire in yeah, this case. Um, so he's having to move down through the bowels of the earth. He actually has to do the descent, yes. And how, how many of them do this? In numbers? In numbers? Oh, uh, well, it depends on the hold, it depends on the era, it depends on a lot of factors. Right. Different um, holds have different balances. Mm. Uh, that is, again, one of the reasons we will see eventually Dwegon fighting each other again. Mm -hmm. Not only inside a hold they will fight each other, yeah. but in every hold there's sort of a balance. It may be kept through conflict, but yeah. there is a balance, especially when it comes to the outside world or yeah. others who are gone. Okay. They, they, they consider themselves a whole. This is an achievement, a huge achievement for mm. a bomb society. But when they find the other whole, if the other whole does not agree completely, and who agrees completely, yeah. they will have a disagreement in the classic do fashion. Okay. <laughs> so that's why their interaction is very regulated by the Nemancers, who try yeah. to keep it highly ritualized and formal. I see. To prevent any such uh, ideas <laughs> from sort of escaping the bounds. And yeah, suddenly so it's no, like... No going off script. Yes, yeah. stick to the script. Sort of what you were yelling at us before the interview. <laughs> <laughs> I have never done that. Anyway, I swear. <laughs> oh, okay, so... We're, we're seeing a gifted. Uh, above the gifted, who is he? Now, there are people who still uh, worship war in a more traditional fashion. Not, again, as a religious thing, but as a thing, as a gift. Mm -hmm. War is a gift. War is a source of power. War is a source of freedom. Through mm -hmm. war, we broke our chains. Through war, we remain free. Mm -hmm. This is, we can call him a, a preacher of mm -hmm. war. And you can see that he's not exactly spiritual. <laughs> no, no, he's, he's very functionally dressed. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that blade he is carrying about, he's got one side for slashing and the other side for punching through heavy plates. <laughs> that looks like a vicious weapon. Even That's the thing with the, the actual weapon designs you've done for these are very, very new to my eyes. I've never seen this sort of fantasy race, this sort of take on it. It's very cool to see that there are there are hooks and spikes on the weapon. One of the ideas for that is that how do you kill a dragon? Yeah. You lift the scale ah, and stab. I see. I mean, like, I suppose you're you're essentially designing a fantasy Swiss Army knife with something like that. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, yeah, it works. Yeah. yeah. One of the curious things that we struggled with a long time with the uh, Duerom was that they abandoned the beautiful mm -hmm. for the functional. Yes. Their whole purpose is war. Mm. 
So you have incredibly functional designs, multi-part armors that allow you to, sh to get rid of what's broken, replace mm -hmm. it. Uh, replace it with what um, actually yeah, even bet. during with, a yeah, yeah with something new to repair it's quick to repair highly functional mm. but as you gain more ammo as you gain more worth mm. um, suddenly your armor can be inscribed because it is yours you've earned the right and mm. the, the, this fixation with memory that the Duerom have it goes everywhere if you go into their holes their the, the entire walls are carved with the achievements of their ancestors um, oh, wow so what are we seeing here? These are concept sketches for a foundry. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, the uh, while the foundry itself is operated by the Dwerom, um, and you can see their touches on it, the original foundries were created for them by the dragons. And they're uh -huh. these strange sorcerous constructs uh, that free the Dwerom from the menial labor of uh, mining mm -hmm. um, and allow them to concentrate exclusively on the crafting. Uh -huh. So, um, so if you no longer need to craft beauty, function takes less time than beauty. Exactly. So, ooh. exactly. Um, so it's it's a highly functional, incredibly sharp, uh, resistant uh, designs, mm. alloys uh, that the tempered, which are the other right. faction, um, are capable of crafting that no other race is. I am expecting this to be the very classic, super tough brick faction. You're going to have lots of these guys moving up the table and you're not going to be fit to shift them <laughs> it it's a uh, yes this is me making a guess <laughs> we are trying very hard one of the problems that we've encountered is that is a very monotonous army if mm. it plays in that fashion so we're trying very hard to give them the same feel mm -hmm. i mean when you when you buy into them that's what you want to see mm -hmm. but at the same time you don't want to make them absolutely dominant on the field yeah so one of the interesting uh issues that the Dwerom have is that while yes, their heavy infantry is almost unstoppable, mm. their heavy infantry arrives late in the development of the game. Uh, so they have to perform according to their statistics mm. or they run into trouble very quickly scoring enough victory points. I see, I see. Well, I mean, like, for, for the actual narrative behind these guys, I assume they're very difficult to control on the battlefield, would they be? Just with that, that aggression that's built in there? There is, there's definitely, there are definitely aspects of that, but mm. not for the, uh, not for your average trooper. We mm. found that very few people enjoy not controlling their yeah. forces on the yeah. table. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it can be very, very frustrating. So we've kept that for the more extreme versions of the gotcha. troops. However, the, and there's also other reasons. I mean, the, the tempered are the exact opposite mm -hmm. of that. Mm. As I said, as I explained, uh, on the opposite of the Arden, which fully embrace this gift, there are the Tempered. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the Tempered believe this is a, a tainted gift. Yes. They believe there was an, a, a flaw in the original plan of the ancestors that uh, subsumed in such a hurry mm. both war or, and siphoned the, the power of the prison that held him. Mm. And they are trying to find a way to break free of that. Now, because they realize that their gifted are in many ways doomed unless they control it. They have focused a lot of their efforts on creating, based on the machines sort of given to them by the dragons, mm -hmm. the fully automated factories and mm -hmm. foundries. They have created their own versions of specially designed craft uh, products that contain the elements. Mm. Uh, things on their are uh, parts of their armor that contain the fire and mm. let it be controlled and be released at the moment where you want instead mm. of when it wants like the Arden. yeah <laughs> which the f the fire inside him decided no it, i look better than hair <laughs> and that's it <laughs> wow. now for them they actually have unlike most Dwagom, they actually have a plan mm. they among the Dwagom, among those gifted in fire more or earth more or even both in a mm -hmm. sort of balanced fashion there are what they call the steel shapers mm -hmm. they are a different kind of gifted their unique ability which is extremely rare their unique ability is to not just control fire and earth individually but to shape elements they are the ones that can actually create alloys that are otherwise impossible to create, which is why they have the best of armor, if mm. they so choose, the best of any creation, because they can, in a way, they commune with the metal itself. Mm. Now, 
to and they are very tempered in their own way the tempered the actual tempered mm -hmm. see them as the solution mm -hmm. Not all of them agree. I mean, not all of the steel savers agree, but yeah. however, they are looked upon as a solution, as the pinnacle of the race that will let them break free of the tainted gift, and mm. they will finally be truly free of all influence. Mm. Uh, apart from that, you need figures to keep yeah. you know, order in a yes. Dwergom hold. So those from the clans that rise to extreme levels of worth mm. are named the thing now that can change there is no he's a thing he will say forever no yeah. because somebody else might catch up yeah or he might dishonor himself mm -hmm. true 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 in my mind they're too nice to do that <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite i don't know no, that... now you can you guess who the thing is from these guys uh okay so if i'm gonna take the guess i'm gonna say it's the guy who's standing on the rocks <laughs> Am I right? Am I wrong? He that, that is above all else, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, well, it, it was either going to be him or the guy with the shield down the bottom, because if he's keeping order... But that... the... Look closer. So this... <laughs> what am I saying here? That is not actually a shield. That is not actually a shield. It is a... Um, let's call it a flame projection mechanism. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> he is one of the tempered. He God, is one yeah. of the tempered. Um covered in steel he is actually a steel shaper got it um and his armor adapts to whatever he needs it to be that is their gift they can control metal directly wait All... so he has morphic armor pretty much sort of yeah yeah Ooh. yeah um the thing is pretty badass though yeah <laughs> uh, I, I, wait i know i should have known he has a cloak mm. yeah <laughs> well there's a small cloak there because they're very high up yeah but the the, the thing is fancier <laughs> <laughs> so Theans then, whenever they've risen up within the society, what would be their main role within the world? The world or the hold? The hold. The hold, Let, is, <laughs> the hold is to keep everyone in check. Mm. And they are usually powerful enough to achieve this. Mm. Uh, when I say powerful, I mean they are the best of warriors, mm. probably. They are the best of diplomats. I'm putting, you know... So would they be <laughs> more from the tempered side of the... It depends thing? on the hold. Oh, Which okay. is where the interesting thing happens. Now, the clans in general are not as, uh, let's say, passionate about their beliefs as, as either the ardent or the tempered. Mm. Because both are sort of extremes. Mm. The tempered, too, are extreme in their own way. Yes. But the clans try to stay kind of neutral in this conflict, but of course... There, there might be, you know, some sort of mm. one thing leans towards one side, the other. Yeah. Others lean towards nemancy, and they allow the nemancers to have more control over mm. the communication between the different uh, clans yes. and sects in inside society. It's very different to sounding society again. Again, fully fleshed out sounds really intriguing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's all I can say to this. Uh, yeah. there's, there's a we, lot of effort and a lot of thought and a lot of passion that's gone into it. Uh, yeah. And we hope that this comes through it, and it, this communication. It, well, it's coming across for me. No, it's, it's coming good. across for me. And we also hope that it comes across games wise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. the, this is the thing the, the factions that I've played so far do have the, the feeling and the sense of the societies that you've told me about. So that was the human and the spire. I've played humans versus spire. I don't think I've played Spire versus Humans yet, but I will in the future, I promise. <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting these guys on the table because I'm curious to see how the mechanics and the, the gameplay runs out for them with the, the system that you have. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, anything else you'd love to show for the Dragon? Well, I think we can just show some art, really. Oh, here. So this is an entrance, but... Well, you can see the, the patience and you can see the marks of mm -hmm. Nemancy all around, which... Pretty much tell the whole story. Mm -hmm. They tell this is how this was created. Everything is there mm. for those who know how to read it. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> so, hang on. There, there's some first stone mason, Chip and Angle, and I put this brick in on this day at this time. On this watch, sorry. It goes deeper than that. It's, okay. It tells a whole memory, mm. like on this conflict that ensued between this thing and that faction that happened it's a very very intricate mm. maybe not nemancy knowledge forms mm. but it can go so far as to actually hold memories or so some do a gone belief okay okay 
And are we seeing some dwagum down the front of this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they build big. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, you have to remember that their influence, even though they try to dismiss yeah, yeah. it and you know take it out of their of their history books, is that they were created to create so big. Yeah. For they the created steel, for dragons. Yeah. Yeah, and then the only other savior in brackets that they ever found was war, which, mm. in his own way, was huge. Uh. He was one of the four horsemen. He is an immense power mm. of the world. Cool. Okay, so uh, shall we move on to the Nords? Okay. Oh, may I please? Oh, oh, so one, oh, last one more. Yes, one more. This is one more. Ah, oh, uh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Again, whenever you've dug down so deep, Nem oh, I see the Nemancy on the walls, and I hadn't noticed that mm -hmm. before. But when you dig down so deep, seeing the the fire rising up from beneath this this hold is very cool looking. I but think yes, I think I can now. <laughs> okay, uh, because I can talk further. For yes. <laughs> there's so much I'm not telling you here, and I'm holding myself back. Oh. <laughs> um, so the Nords. Um, yeah. One mm -hmm. of the curious things that we encountered. Uh, let's just, let's just yes, yeah. it's more Nordic. <laughs> um, so one of the curious things that we encountered is that um, people tend to oh yes Vikings, um, and yet they they don't appear very prominently in many war games. Mm. Um, so we were very keen on bringing in um, a, a clearly Viking influenced uh, mm. faction. Yes. Um, and uh, there is a certain uh, mindset that, yeah. uh, that 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 generally goes with this uh, with this faction and the people who enjoy them, and I think it's it's briefly encapsulated here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if I may, I have had enough of your. <laughs> <laughs> encapsulates this perf perfectly. Um, so, the the what's very interesting with the Nords is. Most people are familiar with the, their mythology, yes. Odin and Thor and Loki and the promise of Ragnarok and all of this beautiful background that mm. they have. In our world, um, this happened. Yes. Ragnarok came, mm. the gods are dead, but it didn't happen as was promised. Mm. So the gods selected the greatest of warriors to become their Einherjad. Um, Sorry to anybody of Nordic descent or who knows it very well, because I'm probably mangling the word. <laughs> um, but um, they selected their warriors. The, the Valkyries would come and select the best warriors who fell on the field of battle, and they would be taken um, to fight mm -hmm. on Ragnarok on behalf of the mm -hmm. on behalf of the gods against uh, Sudr and his fire giants. Mm -hmm. Now, the the curious thing is that unlike the legend prophesized, mm -hmm. they would be woken by Heimdall's horn. Mm. Heimdall never sounded the horn. Mm. The Einherjar never woke up. Mm. The gods were outnumbered and outmatched mm. and were defeated and destroyed. Mm. So, centuries later, by some random fluke, the Einherjar wake up mm. to um, a world engulfed in winter. Um, the population, the plaything of giants that had been waiting for the gods to go away. Humanity on the brink of extinction. And these are superhumanly gifted uh, warriors. Yeah. Um, and they wake up angry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and unfortunately, the only thing between them and their, 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 their poor targets, and their poor targets are giant. I would point, giants, I would point this out. Wait, poor targets? Yes, poor targets. Um, this, is, for giants? this is something, yes. yes this, is something this, is I, yeah. this is something I would like to underline, that this is not just a typical Nord, all right? <laughs> okay. No. I mean, th he has the mindset of a typical Nord. A typical Nord will do this. Yeah, yeah but I'll those are closer. Go. Those are closer to what's yes. going on. Let's sit back and throw spears at it. Yes, yes. Th those <laughs> get what their chances are. This is something different. Different. Okay. Um, and so the, the Einherjar basically take battle to the giants. Mm. And it's... It, okay, it's easy to call it a massacre, but I don't want to go on th to that extreme. It's a one-sided uh, battle. Mm -hmm. um, they are fast, they are organized, they are terrifying. Mm. Um, because that is what they were created to do. Mm. And after the giants are defeated, the human population is released. This happens, luckily, to coincide with the thawing of the, uh, of the planet, as we mentioned before. Um, 
But what happens is that it becomes evident that the gods never expected the Ein Herjar to survive the Ragnarok. Because no thought has been given to their stability. Mm -hmm. No thought has been given to what happens should they procreate. Oh. So all of a sudden, um, with the, uh, with, with the, as the Zayn are start interacting with the human population, mm -hmm. their, let's call them genes, don't translate the way they should. Okay. So you have creatures that have the strength and power of them. But not necessarily their grace, ah. and so you end up having what the, the hell is that? <laughs> um, so wow. on, the t on the very top layer, um, it's the Etins, uh -huh. who are a devolution of the ogre themselves, uh -huh. a devolution of the Ein uh -huh. um, and it leads to a very strange society um, because the Ein not only their children, um, are not quite human mm -hmm. are there is, is there are their genes weird and the manifestation strange yeah they themselves are degenerating under their own influences ah. um so many of the iron are becoming increasingly um inhuman mm -hmm. increasingly monstrous okay um so as i'm uh, uh, in for example in nordic mythology there are four holy uh, four holy holy sacred animals the eagle the mm -hmm. raven uh, the wolf and the bear yeah Again, this is very generic. I hope I'm not. Um, <laughs> generalizations. Yes, folks. broad generalizations, generalizations here. Um, and so many, many would identify themselves with this. And the power that they receive from the gods is the ability to shift into that form or to draw gifts from that form to communicate with uh, the animals. Mm. Their children might inherit part of this gift, but not the whole range of it. Mm -hmm. Or it might be dormant, only to be woken up in them when they're actually bitten by a member of that species and suddenly they can't control the gift that's mm. how the lycanthropy comes into play ah. it's not a curse it is you had this in your blood but it is not active until yeah. it's introduced to the original dna of the gotcha. creature that came so um what we've tried to do here is create a society that is incredibly pressured because the nords live in manaheim which is um i think we oh yeah up here in the north uh. Yes. Um, it, is, it is the hardest environment on the planet. Mm. Um, they're under siege by the elements themselves. Um, and survival is absolutely, it needs every ounce of, every resource at their disposal. Mm. So in many cases, for example, the ogres are a tremendous resource. Yeah. Um, they're strong. Yeah. Loyal. Mm. Not the brightest. Follow orders. <laughs> <laughs> they follow orders. Exactly. And it leads to very strange situations in which you've got this bestial thing that yet is the child or is the descendant of one of the exalted sort of, how would we call it, ancestor, demigods, um, figures that the Einherjar themselves are. Mm -hmm. um, but as time has gone on, these Einherjar have started to vanish. Mm. Um, either because they degenerate completely. Yes. Because they realize that the more they are stimulated, the more they lose their temper. The more they lose their temper, the more their, let's call it, um, other side takes yes. over. Um, so many of them have distanced themselves from society. So today there are very few that are active in the North society, and it's largely in the hands of their descendants, mm -hmm. uh, of their, we call them blooded, their descendants, that they have the blood of uh, their um, Mm -hmm. Let's yeah, call it their, their ancestors and their yes. demigods, but they themselves are half mortal in a way. And um, it, it creates a very curious dynamic between them where the monstrous is familiar. Mm. For example, trolls, yes. right? Normal stereotype. Yeah. In, uh, in Ea, the origin of the trolls is one of the Einherjar whose gift was the ability to heal, the ability to regenerate. Yes. He gets trapped. Uh, he's fighting the giants um, in a cave with his followers. Mm -hmm. And uh, the giants, realizing they're losing, collapse the cave. Right. They're trapped for a long time underground. Mm. There's only one food source. Everybody else. Well, everybody else. Or if you don't want to kill everybody else, how about we all eat from the guy that doesn't die if you cut off his hand? Ooh. They start <laughs> cannibalizing their leader. Ugh. Who himself has, is not quite human. So they start ingesting yes, this, his this essence, his DNA, yeah. and his, and this twists them. 
I did mention mature. Yes. <laughs> Fair enough, but no, I, I was seriously expecting it to go the other direction, where it was him feeding off everyone else, not everyone else feeding off no, him. No, they, they feed off him. Right. And unfortunately, this changes them. Mm-hmm. The, his, his whatever it is that made him different enters them, yeah. but they're not built for it, and they warp, they twist, yeah. they turn, and years later... What actually makes it to the surface is an entire tribe of completely different things. Yeah. Kin, but not. Yeah. And what about him? Um, he himself might still be down there, might not. <laughs> um, we, we intend to slowly introduce the living legends of each, um, okay. of each race. That, that's and, one that uh, I'm super curious about. And we're hoping, we're hoping to be able to bring many of these out. Mm. Um, right now, the, one of, there are... There are a number of Einherjars still active. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows exactly how many. Uh, Angbjorn, he is the most active. Mm-hmm. And curiously, it's because he's the, he's the, he's the mildest of them all. Ah. Two, meter, you know, two meter tall beef of a beef slab. Um, <laughs> he technically is the high king. Okay. It's, a very loose, uh, it's a very loose social structure. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the things that we for that I didn't mention is that after the the giants are defeated, mm-hmm. uh, rather than be eradicated, they actually take an oath of service. Okay, which uh, is why we showed this. Yeah, one. which ah. is here. they are still around. They are still around. So what are these exactly? Just to clarify, these okay. here, what you're seeing here, are sea giants. Okay. There are mountain giants and storm giants. Storm gotcha. giants were the leadership. Uh-huh. Um, sea giants and mountain giants are let's call it. The um, well, the navy and the fit soldiers? Mm-hmm. Eh, not <laughs> yeah. quite. But uh, they're they're the different sub races that, that okay. comprise uh, the the Jotun, as we call them. Mm. Um, and uh, they soar north of service. Mm. So society in the north is actually very fluid. It's yeah. very based on merit. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to be tough uh, to claim it yeah. and clever and strong enough to keep it. Yeah, that makes you. And none of this codified like I am the son of so and so, and you know. Uh, it is my divine right to rule. No, 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 no. If you're powerful enough to take it and canny enough to keep it, you're leader and you've earned it. Fair enough. Very often this leads to the uh, blooded, who have particular advantages, mm-hmm. being in control, but not always, because these gifts are hard to control. Yes. So sometimes they're a blessing, sometimes they're a curse. It's mm. halfway in between. Yes. Um, I think that is a general theme of the Nords, is somewhere in between. Yeah. Like whether it's Blessed, animal, yes, cursed, Blessed, cursed yeah. animal, animal, human, monstrous. Mm. It, it's that that seeing that the giants are are within the faction. There seems to be a merging I, of the, the typical stuff. Ah, uh, you, you can't actually see it. Well, where is it? Ah, uh, on the on the far right of the image, it's cut uh, out of this one. But yeah. they, they can see it. They'll be able to see it when yeah. we post oh, this. What's what's carrying the wood here? Oh, this is an ogre. Ah, that is another example. It's just yeah, that. yeah. yeah. Uh, but on the far right, you can see halfway wading in the water, halfway up to his hip, there's a giant helping pull up a, ah, a ship. I, th- I think we may have seen this on a previous episode whenever we had uh, yes, the over. Um, but the ogres, you see, it's 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 picking flowers. You know, it's carrying a load. It's carrying a load of wood on its back, yeah. escorting a um, a scald yeah. and picking flowers. Yeah. It's it's a weird integration of yeah, the bestial that merging of what would normally be considered no, that's it's a monster. Kill it. But it's introduced into their society, and yeah. this is something that we've tried to that we've tried to bring out mm. um, while keeping while strongly keeping the Viking the Viking element and yeah. themes. Yeah. Um, Again, it's, cool. this is part of our general view of what our world we would like our world to be mm. a, a living, breathing world with mm. everyday life. Yes, there's war. This is what this is about. But there's a living, breathing world behind it. But it 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 gives me a real sense of. Why? Because that's one thing I'll see in some games. I'll see a unit in an army that I look at it and it goes, it doesn't fit. Hearing things like this, it it fits flawlessly for me that this is why we have ogres that might fight alongside us. They're actually a part of our society, a part Mm -hmm. of our community, a part of the culture. This is actually my favorite faction. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm loving the, the Nordic aspects to it. I'm loving the, the complete different take on the, the monstrous aspects of the, the legends of the, the Nordic culture. Mm-hmm. And actually just hearing how, how everything intermingles and mixes and works together is fabulous. I'm glad. Um, I think you're going to love this then. Oh. Uh, Yggdrasil. Yes. Beautiful. Um, so... I th- if, what, since he spoke of the why, I think we can tell them the why. The, the Nords, why. The okay. why the Nords want to come south. 
I think it's so. I like the story. <laughs> uh, the legend of Ragnarok speaks that the world ends at the hands of Sutr, yep. the fire giant. Yes. Um, in uh, how much deep do we go? How, how deep do we go? No, I think we can just. Let's link, say in a previous video, I think we we said how at some point the old dominion tried to. Yeah, reestablish and, to engulf oh, the yeah, north, yeah, where they they wanted to or not. I think I think we mentioned we did, that we did. the old dominion tried to go to Mannheim and take yeah. over the Nords, and the Nords didn't like it. Yes, okay. but um, that actually that event and who led that invasion and how that invasion resulted is actually the northern uh, is Ragnarok. Ah, I see. Um, I see. So in essence, the the fabled fire giants are essentially the people from the south. Got it. Or their predecessors or from yeah, the, the Dominion. Yeah. I, we don't want to reveal too much because a lot of there's a lot of uh, of effort and interweaving that's gone into the backstory, weaving it into weaving it into the world. Yeah. But I think it was to show that the, they are not isolated. Its faction yeah. is not isolated. So yeah. the Hundred Kingdoms. Well, the Hundred Kingdoms may not. But the Nords have a beef with the Hundred Kingdoms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and the this artwork, I'm I'm sorry. This this is going to be my my desktop top image for a long time now. <laughs> just because this rendition of Yggdrasil in the in the north is wow. Well, okay, I'm not going to curse. I'm not going to curse. <laughs> I'm going to give you. Uh, I'm going to give you a small hint. May I? Uh, yeah. Uh, when the interactive map is out, look for Yggdrasil. That's all I'm going to say. Oh. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll There's, be keeping an eye out for if it. You, if you're careful here, you can actually see some hints as to another mm. way the Nords are tied into the world. Yes. It's just, it's beautiful. I'll leave yeah. this up for everybody for a second. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. I think. Oh, one last this. one? Oh, no, I yeah, yeah, no, there's... Some... Here are some uh, early uh, renditions of the Raiders, yeah. the way well, we it, imagine them. It, it looks as if they've been trading with the Dwagum, at least this guy, the 46. <laughs> there is actually, there is a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of interaction between them, and not so much the Dwegom as the ones that came before. The ah. actual dwarves. Okay. Um, a very, very small few survived, and I don't know if you, if you, if you're familiar with the Germanic dwarves of the Nibelung. I they're know three, that. They're three brother dwarves. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. I actually, I'm not sure they're they're brothers, but they uh, they are bitter, jealous guardians of the treasures that they hoard and. No gift they give is without an attendant curse, oh. and anything taken from them mm -hmm. comes and bites you in the. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, in the. Beat. Um, and the Dwarom actually do have a lot of interaction with them. Uh, some of it friendly, some of it not so much. Yeah. and they feature prominently in their um, in their backstory, um, and have helped shape a number of them when we we're not re we're not revealing them yet because we, we want to get them just right mm. but the um the nords also work uh there are two sides let's mm -hmm. call it to their army there yes. is the blooded side which mm -hmm. includes those who are gifted with mm -hmm. the strange blood and the, and the beasts of the army mm -hmm. and then there's the mortal side mm -hmm. and uh the mortals follow what you would expect. You have the the raiders mm -hmm. um, on a higher tier than them. You have the huskarls and their heavy armor, mm -hmm. shields, um, the ability to fold sheer la shield lines and anchor the battle line, which is something that the Nords on the field will need quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, they thrive in a in a complex battlefield, multiple individual conflicts, no units ganging up on them. Mm -hmm. um, but they and they ha and they they excel at setting up these situations. Mm. But at the same time, they're a little bit of a glass cannon. Mm -hmm. um, so if your opponent turns the tables on you and starts focusing you down, mm. you, you're going to find yourself in trouble. This sounds exactly like my style of play. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they're an army we feel that will be very uh, that will be very good for beginner for beginners. Mm -hmm. People who are familiar with the game will start suffering with them, and then when you master again, when you master them again, you'll be able to start, you'll be able to play them to their full potential. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we have some I think, other I think images. Oh. Here mm -hmm. we've got some renditions of the ogres. Mm -hmm. um, heavy infantry, and you notice that they're not necessarily kitted out 
um, for war. Uh, this this looks like the the baggage train is being called up to fight. <laughs> yes, because they still fulfill a role in the society, and that is the role they're most valuable in. Yeah, pure but strength. The, yeah. yeah, but they're also very very useful. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're not smart enough to know when they should be afraid. <laughs> yeah, and if you put well, if we look at the one of them, he's got a big Tetsubo there. We've got mm -hmm. twin axes. We've got huge cleavers. We've got chain blades, spiked fists. Put that on an ogre and say, look, that's a bad guy. <laughs> Make jam. Yeah. Go boom boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so their, um, their, their army lineup is, uh, has a strong human element, so mm -hmm. you're going to have all the traditional Viking images, and mm -hmm. eventually you're going to reach the chosen men who are, um, they're going to be some of the most elite units in, mm -hmm. the, in the game, mm -hmm. and uh, they are... There's the, there's the blade chosen, there's the bow chosen, and then mm -hmm. finally there's the horde chosen. And they're the ones that have been gifted uh -huh. uh, by the dwarves from their own hordes in exchange for a promise they exacted from I the see. Jarl. Um, and uh, they are terrifying on the battlefield. Um, they're small units of what is essentially mini-heroes. Their statistics mm -hmm. are mind-numbingly insane. <laughs> um, and you're sitting there trying to figure out how to beat them head-on, and mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's difficult. Um, the wolf chosen are high are high impact uh, unit, and the the, the 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 crow chosen are more of a stealthy, light unit. Comes onto the field, incredibly accurate in shooting, and you can customize all of these tremendously. Mm. Um, and at the same time, they're going to have access to much more um, esoteric troop types, the monstrous aspect of the horde. Mm -hmm. But something that we've tried very hard for every faction um, is that you can play the sub factions. Uh, on their own. Well, when we finally release all of the miniature ranges, mm. they've been designed that, you know what, I only want to play mortals. Mm. You're going to be able to field an effective army. Ah, so you're going to have some independence between the sub-factions of the, the factions? That's the idea. Nice. Slowly, as the, in the beginning, unfortunately, because we, we don't have the range yet, yeah. you're going to have to use a little bit of everything. That, but, that does let people see the flavor of both sides and play with it. Mm -hmm. And so as we develop more, where there's going to start being some redundancy between roles, each of them is going to have its strength, mm -hmm. but we hope to be able to reach a point where each sub-faction can play purely with itself. So yeah. I want to play the more bestial sides of the Nords. Mm -hmm. Or I want to play a uh, Hundred Kingdoms army that is entirely Spire. Uh, sorry, excuse me, that is entirely <laughs> Order. Yeah. It's only the Orders and their Men-at-Arms and mm -hmm. the, um, the, the the Knightly Orders themselves, yeah. period. I don't want any faith in there. I don't want anything of the, the mm -hmm. nothing of the Imperial Remnants. You yeah. can do the same with the Spires. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a lot of effort has been taken to make each of these factions and sub-factions something I can eventually play on its own. That's very, very cool. I mean, like, I'm, I'm loving what I'm seeing for both the, the Dwagom and the, the Nords. The Nords have it for me. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry, guys. I, I love my Viking stuff. I love the take that you've done on it. The, the idea that uh, yeah, that, <laughs> this was the like. image that sold me. This, <laughs> this, this image alone sold me. Okay, everybody out there, get your comments in below. Tell us, are these two factions exciting you for conflict? Uh, we will move on here. Get those comments in. The guys, I'm sure, will be keeping an eye on the comments. We will move on. We will see you in the next one. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.